We have an urgent group therapy this week that is sadly not only urgent in nature, it's all too common. Many of you shared your similar experiences on both sides of the layoffs, and it is always a hard time when it happens. Our writer sends, help me Rhonda, just last week, the company I work for initiated workforce reductions and we lost almost a thousand coworkers. Some were happy to go, others completely blindsided. It was pretty rough and I'm in desperate need of any advice you can provide in terms of coping, adjusting to new teams, roles and everything for our admin group. Signed, Sucker Punched. All of your advice as always has been wonderful. Marlene Coulter from Waterloo, Ontario shared that the first thing you need to do is utilize your employee assistance plan if you have one available or talk to a professional and ensure you process your own feelings. As we know, you can't support others if your cup is empty. Now that's the perfect advice to start with. Sylvia Plester Silk also chimed in on the personal side of dealing with this to acknowledge your feelings of grief and loss. You need to honor where you are and ensure you practice self-compassion. Even though you survived the massive layoffs, you're still grieving. Stephanie Han from the Chicago, Illinois area says that it is normal to be scared that there may be more layoffs coming. So figure out what you need to do to put yourself in a better position in case that happens. Ask yourself if you want to stay where you are feeling insecure, but above all, take care of yourself. From Columbus, Ohio, Laura Gopner shared that having a certain amount of survivor's guilt and PTSD is understandable in this situation. Now, on our Facebook discussion, she posted a wonderful resource that I suggest you go take a look at. Roberta, Roberta Torrey from Fort St. John, BC, encourages you to step up and lead where you can. She says you're smart and talented, clearly, as they've kept you, and see some significant issues that can be addressed. I'm sure you can see them. She suggests that you meet with your admins in your group one-on-one -on -one and then invite them into small groups where you share with each other and get to know everyone better. Start to create an atmosphere of support and encouragement, create a vision board or key points development plans for changes that the group would like to see going forward. Hopefully it can be shared with management and HR. While none of that will be easy to do, it will be healthy for all of you and helpful for HR and management. Shelly Wassell from St. Louis, Missouri gave some great advice on what not to do. She says, don't walk around bad mouthing the company, talking about what they did negatively, speaking negative about your peers or what's happened or happening or completely shut down. What you can do is encourage your peers and reassure them that you are there for them. Acknowledge their concerns and explore positive ways you can cope together. As suggested above, meet regularly with your admin group to talk about how everyone is feeling and how they're handling their workload. Offer suggestions on and, and allow an open forum to explore how you can all help one another. Form an alliance, pick up each other's slack, be willing to ask for help yourself. With that many people gone, there's a lot of work left over. Shelly says that you need to just keep doing you and be the best that you can be and stand out from the rest. Being a positive light can go a long way. Now, we all know that HR should be and likely is doing something about the situation, but as everyone suggests, don't count or rely on that. Take care of you and those that are remaining. Create a positive from a negative and support yourself and one another. The next few months, I'm sure, will be very difficult. We all hope that this advice makes them a little bit easier. <laughs>